Hello. This is a video about my um, sitting in a hedge practice. I've uh, chosen a spot where I live, near where I live, and I've been hanging around there most days, checking it out, seeing what happens. Why am I doing that? Well, when I was a kid, when I was growing up, I knew where I lived, like the back of my hand. I'd, that's the only place I knew. I'd lived there my whole life. I fought, I played, I made up in the same parks, streets, backfields. And there was something about just really knowing where I was and being outside a lot and inhabiting my senses that gave me a way of being in the world. There's a certain spontaneity and wonder and imaginative sort of malleability that children have and I've been looking to rekindle and recover that as an adult. Hence, just slow down, stop, find a spot and reconnect through the senses. So this is a video about what's been happening and in particular I want to uh, share some thoughts on how inhabiting the senses takes us into imagination. So let's get over to my little spot in the hedge and see what's been happening. Here we are, here she is, my lovely hedge, Hawthorne hedge, the little stile there, a little gap where I've been sitting. A blessing for the urban unwell, some peace and quiet in the city. So here we are in my hedge. Welcome to the hedge. I really like it here. Uh, I've been hanging around. So what's been happening? Well, not a lot. Not a lot of action. Um, and sometimes it can be a bit boring, to be honest. At least to start with. Particularly later in the day, when my mind is maybe a bit more active. It takes a while for it to slow down and sort of sensitise to the stillness and... and be interested and then things start to happen things stand out this morning I noticed the crane driver climbing his tower to get into his cabin for his day's work that was kind of cool I'd never seen that before uh, the other day a pair of uh, magpies swooped over and landed on the fence and then they they glided out across the railway they went out where I couldn't go and then the most curious thing that's happened, the one that I want to tell you about in particular, is the rumble that came up to me through the seat. The ground began to shake and I was tipped into this uh, incomprehension, not knowing, mystery that reminded me, because in childhood I was out walking the dog a lot and in the distance there would often be something that I couldn't make out, I didn't know what it was. It was just like that, I was right back there and, and I used to walk towards whatever it was and I could feel my mind wriggling around coming up with pictures explanations is it a spaceship have the aliens landed is it a giant snail and then at a certain distance or a certain angle it would become clear that it was just I don't know a, 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 an old fertilizer sack blown in the wind it was never a spaceship and the same thing happened here I realised that beneath me is a subterranean railway and that hundreds of people are being transported around underground on the Victoria Line or the Piccadilly Line. However, the mysterious, mysterious thing is that on other times I've come and I've not felt that vibration. So either it's just a little branch line of the underground or it needs to be a quiet day when there's no other noises around, no other vibrations around, or there's something else going on. And that got me interested in the earth. What is going on down there? And I started to notice that um, there are these cracks appearing in the earth because the weather's been quite hot and the earth's been drying up. Let's look at these cracks. Here we are. Mysterious cracks are appearing across the earth. And what I loved about these cracks is it took me into something of childhood. It's like 
there's something thirsty down there that's needing a drink. It wasn't just uh, dry and lacking moisture and losing its muddy cohesion. The earth was a person and it needed a drink. And the crack wasn't just a crack, it was a mouth. And it had something to say and it was like I was listening to the land. And the voices of the land. And what's exciting about that is that I was starting to, and this is what I was wanting to find, starting to get back into that sense of imagination that it was wild that existed out there in the world, in the land, and the trees, and the animals before it got locked up in books, before imagination got locked up inside my head. So that was yesterday filming in the sunshine. Back again this morning in moderate rain, let's call it. Back to visit the hedge. I love that, that the, the cracks are taking me back to that kind of childhood fascination and wonder. And that images are starting to leak out into the world around me. My imagination's starting to wake up. And just through slowing down, being in the hedge, noticing. I'm being drawn out into the world of the crane driver. I'm being drawn out into the world of the magpie drawn into the earth through the cracks. I mean this morning it's raining and I find myself concerned that the cracks might close up and then how would the earth breathe? So I'm more embodied coming down out of my head and then through my senses I'm embedded in the world around me and between me and the crane driver, between me and the rumble beneath me, a story appears pictures appear, voices come. Imagination's this kind of in-between, it's a kind of perception that exists between me and what I make contact with. Which is what happens when you read a book. So you're reading a book that's text, between you and the text, pictures appear. And we've kind of over-specialised and narrowed down, if you like, we take that for granted. We don't think about that as a kind of animism, as a kind of enchanted magic. But reading a book is to cast a spell and to bring alive imagination. I'm just trying to remember what it was like when I wasn't so specialized and when images, voices, stories were read in the surface of the earth, in the pictures that I saw in the sky. Anyway, so here we are, we're back in the hedge. I'm gonna sit here for a while and get wet. And um, I'll put some uh, notes uh, in the description below, in the YouTube description. I'll uh, give you some quotes uh, on this kind of imagination territory. Um, do share if you know anyone who might be interested in hanging around in a hedge or being inspired to do similar things um, and if you've not already do subscribe thanks again for watching brilliant and uh, i'll see you next time okay bye bye